Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of Into the Breach. We're back here again with the Blitzkrieg as we're making our way through our second island, and so far it has gone pretty darn well. Detonation Park gave us a good start with a ton of additional power. We got a level up on Lily here, giving us an additional mech reactor. We got an extra power cell from the park, and another one from the Time Pod, which helped us get back on track here in a pretty big way. We got Prospero, our new flying pilot on the lightning mech, although we may manipulate our pilots around a little bit later on. So far, things are going pretty well. We have another map to go to before our boss fight, though, and that might be a problem. Let's go take a look at Rust Beach, where we have to defend an Earth Mover. This is another one of those places where we have something we have to protect that counts as a health bar, not a power bar. So we may have problems here from our lightning mech, because as far as I can tell, the hook mech can't shield buildings, even if they are allied. So that's a bit of a problem. But we're going to leave this ability on here for now and hope we can make it take make use of it anyway. We may put it over on a movement later, but I want to experiment with it a little bit more first, since we never really used it to shield an ally in the last map when we had it turned on. Let's head to Rust Beach, though, and give it a shot. One of our Earth Movers is filling in a chasm created by malfunctioning stabilizers. Make sure it stays in one piece. Words are hard. All right, we've got a bunch of bugs coming in here. On the first turn, these two tiles are going to be filled in. So we know that's going to happen. Now, we have a digger on the other side. That's already bad. We have a soldier scion and alpha scarab. Thankfully, it's just a regular digger. So if we can kill the soldier scion, the thing only has two health, and basically anything we have will kill it. Only problem is, so does the earth mover. So let's put our team as close to the front line as we can. Like so. And I think this is going to be how we have to do it. They're, hopefully the digger comes through to here. But even then it's going to be adjacent to the earth mover. So I can't lightning anywhere anymore. But we'll see what happens. So let's confirm this play. And see what we run into. Well, that's great. The Alpha Scarab has committed suicide, and the Digger has also put himself in a position that stops him from being particularly dangerous. So that's actually really good. Now, the only problem is the Soldier Scion's on the other side of the world, and if I use the Boulder to kill him first so that the Lightning kills the Digger, it'll push the Alpha Scarab out the way so I can't pull him into the chasm. Is there a better way to do this? I could actually lob a boulder at myself on the hook mech here to push the digger into the chasm, then move the hook mech up and pull the scarab into the chasm. And only problem there is that... Actually, I can stand here, can't I? We're flying. We can stand over the chasm. I can actually just fly over there and lightning him now. Then I would have to kill the digger with a boulder from the boulder mech. Then we can pull the scarab into the pit. That is definitely a decent play. We have to hit ourselves with a boulder, which isn't great, <laughs> but we only take one damage because of the armor, and that's, I mean, that's pretty cool, so let's do that. Lightning Mech stands over the chasm, kills the uh, Scion, then we drop a boulder on our own head to push the digger down the pit and follow up by pulling the Scarab down the pit. That's pretty good. Those pit tiles are going to be really hard to use after the first turn here, so we might as well take advantage of them while they're here. Alright. That could have been much worse. I will take it. Actually, putting flying on the hook mech could be really good. Just thinking about this now, that would let us place the hook mech over water or over hazards and then pull people into them. Like, I could put it here and pull something in. That's not bad. Now, what we have to consider here is how we're going to take out this guy. I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring... Oh, I can't. I was going to say, bring, bring the hook mech to here, pull them in, and then fire the um, Gemini missiles at both of them. But I actually can't get into that position in any meaningful way. Now we do have three new spawns coming in this turn, so we may want to block one of those just for fun. We do have an achievement with this team for blocking four spawns on one turn, so if we want to get started on that, this might be a good way to delay some spawns so we can block them next turn. But 
if we're going to be delaying spawns, we also kind of want to be doing something significant to make sure that these guys don't destroy all our buildings. So, what we could do is kill this guy with a Gemini missile. I think that's how we have to kill him. It's the only way that actually removes him. We could move the hook mech over to here and pull this guy into this position and then use the lightning mech to splat him with some lightning. The only problem is that puts the hook mech on 1 HP and then he'll die from the emerging sand tile, which is not great. Is there a better way to do this and also block a bunch of spawns? Basically, I just want to get these guys have no opportunity to do anything. I can't push him over two tiles. I could use the boulder to shove him over one, but I can't get him over again into the pit. Um, if we remove him, I think pulling this guy into here is still the best position because his attack hits the boulder. We take one damage on our hook mech, so we have to repair it next turn, but they only get one new spawn, which is probably pretty manageable. We can use the lightning mech to just stand in the way and block another spawn if we want. I think that's probably still the best option. We just use the lightning mech to block this spawn so he doesn't take a shot as well. That way they only have two enemies next turn and we can try and go for that four spawns blocked achievement, although it's probably not going to work because of how many... like how much health we will not have, and in fact they're still going to have two new units to fight with. I think that's going to be the maneuver here though, just because the... Uh, the Alpha Scarab here doesn't really die any other way. And that this is the only tile in this entire row, apart from this one, that is safe if we let this guy actually attack. Because he hits the boulder and does nothing. Alright, let's Gemini Missile him. Let us pull the Firefly over. Let us just block this tile. We can't attack while they're next to him because it'll kill him. And with that said, we can end our turn. I can't repair on Prospero yet, so there's nothing else I can do that'll help me. What happens if I do repair here? Does it do anything to the dust on the ground? No, it doesn't change the tile type. I assumed it wouldn't, but I was interested to see what happens if you try to repair at full HP, because I've never actually done that before. Alright, our boulder is broken. We have an Alpha Leaper. That's kind of a bad thing to have just shown up. That's a pretty inconvenient only enemy, but they were extremely friendly and let us absolutely devastate them with a single attack, which is pretty fun. Unfortunately, that does mean we can't block all of the spawns as it stands. They're gonna get two new guys this turn, because I can actually just use a single Gemini missile attack to kill both of these. And since they all have three health, that's probably going to be what we do. Our lightning mech and hook mech may just repair so that we only have two new enemies because there's four coming in and there's no way we can block all four spawns with the way it's set up, which I kind of figured would happen. I don't know why I expected this to go differently than that, but that's going to be the case. We're going to let two new enemies spawn in after we melt the faces off of these two. There we go. And... Is there anything else I can do? I have to repair the hook mech if I want to block a spawn with it, which I do. Do I want to block that spawn or this one, though? I kind of want to block this spawn instead. Because I don't know what's coming out here, but I don't want to be right next to the Earth Mover. And I may change which one I'm blocking here as well with Prospero. Do I want to block either of these specifically? Do I care that much? Not really. That last hole is going to be filled in this turn, so we're just going to deal with whatever comes through. I'm going to block this one. We'll let the enemies from last turn come in, and not the ones that are new from this turn. I don't think it makes any difference, but let's end the turn and find out. We get a regular Firefly and a regular Leaper. I think we made the right choice there. Regular Firefly is doing nothing. Regular Leaper is attacking our... Hook Mech. Alright, well... I can kill these guys as long as I heal the hook mech first, because if I lightning this chain, it would currently kill the leaper, bring the firefly down to 1 HP so we can kill it with a boulder, but I'd have to be able to move the hook mech after healing it. So we're going to repair with you. Actually, I can't repair with you before moving, can I? Interesting. 
I can't ignore this guy's attack. I can just let it go through. But I can't actually boulder him, because that'll push our mech into the Earth Mover, which would kill it, even if we repair, if we use the Lightning to kill the, the Leaper. Now, alternatively, what we could do here is use the Boulder Mech to kill the Leaper, then move the Hook Mech out of the way and repair it, but then we can't kill the Firefly with Lightning. We have to use the Lightning first to be able to follow up with the Boulder, but if we do that, we have to repair him first, which means Lily can't move. So yeah, we're kind of in a position here where we can't kill this Firefly properly. We could do it, it is possible, but if we kill the Firefly, then we also wind up killing our, our pilot here, which we don't want to do. So I think what we're going to do then is just move out of the way with you. Kill the Leaper which lets us move the hook mech out of the way, or just repair it. I don't even have to move it now. I will move him back one tile. Does it matter if we... It really doesn't matter what we do here. This thing doesn't die. Can I attack a mountain with a... Uh... I'm pretty sure I can't attack a mountain with the lightning still. I don't think increasing the damage would make any difference there. Yeah, you can't attack a mountain with lightning. We just can't do anything to this guy, so I'm just going to let him do his attack, and we'll repair Lily, just for fun. And Prospero. There you go, you can both heal up a little bit. Okay, that'll have to do. Let's end our turn. Maybe not the uh, way that I expected that to go, but it worked out okay. Region is secure. Deploying troops to hold the area before the weather shifts. So far, we're doing pretty good, though. All the civilians protected, all the objectives completed. I'd love another time pod, but I will take what I've gotten so far. All right, corporate HQ time. We have to destroy the Scion Abomination and protect the corporate tower. We've got seven corporate reps. We're potentially getting up to nine here, which would be real nice. Let's do it and see what happens. A Vec monstrosity is assaulting our tower. We have to rely on you this final time to help us. Tower's really far forwards here, actually. Okay. Alpha Scarab and a regular Scarab. And of course, the Scion Abomination gives them the extra HP regeneration and explosive effects. It only has four, five health, though, so we should be able to kill it this turn. The only question is, can we kill it and everything else that's going to be giving us a hard time? That will be the question of the hour, I think. Either way, though, let's confirm our positioning and see where they go. I mean, that is a much more aggressive play than I expected them to make. Interesting. I can actually clear these guys just by smashing them right now with a single Gemini rocket, do some damage to the Scion Abomination, and just chill. Not quite the way I expected this first turn to go. I can't kill this thing right now, which is less than ideal, but we can do a fair amount of damage to it, and the fact that I can kill both of these guys with one attack makes that pretty darn good. Is there a better play here using the hook mech to pull something into a better position? I don't think so. I could use the hook mech to pull this guy here, but I can't fire on these two tiles, so it doesn't make much of a difference. If I were to use the Gemini Missiles here, on the other hand, I do kill the Scion Abomination right away, which would leave us the additional attack actions with our Lightning Mech and our Hook Mech, but I can't easily kill both of these guys at that same time. Only this one actually needs to die, but the four health that it has means that nothing other than our Gemini Missiles kills it outright. I think what we're going to want to do here is Gemini those two, Maybe shield the lightning mech just for fun? Does that matter? I still can't shield buildings, so I know I can't shield the corporate tower with the hook mech. I could also run over here and block the spawn, but we have four turns left, so I don't actually want to block spawns, because we're going to need to deal with those enemies over time anyway. Um, no, I still think this is the play. I still think blowing up both of these guys with one attack is more advantageous to us. I think that we want to then maneuver the... Ah, 
How do I want to do this? I think I want to move the hook mech over to here. Hook mech doesn't have the ability to move through enemies, though. I kind of don't want to be stuck on that side, but I kind of do want to body block them here. We move the hook mech over to here. Use it to shield our lightning mech, and then apply lightning to the Scion Abomination. Alright, let's end our turn. We have a Digger and an Alpha Leaper. That's actually really good placement so far. Hopefully he jumps to here. Yes, okay. This is very convenient placement. It allows us to vaporize the Digger. The only problem is the extra HP on the Scion Abomination makes this less than perfectly ideal. Now, I can kill him with a Gemini Rocket, which would knock him back into the Alpha Leaper for one damage, meaning he would be killed by the Lightning Chain. I think that's the way to go here. Is there anything else I could do that would have that same effect? Like, I could hit him with a Boulder, and that would mean that the Lightning Chain would hit him, but it means the Lightning Chain would not kill this guy. Alternatively, I could move the boulder mech over to here, drop a boulder in this position, push the Scion Abomination into the Alpha Leaper, then lightning the chain. That's actually probably better. Because now everything dies when the health goes away. Yes! Alright, that was a pretty cool combo there. All right. Now, with Lily, I think we're probably just going to heal. I could block one of these spawns. Might as well. Might as well. Let's end our turn here. A single Firefly comes in. That's pretty manageable so far. Now, this is the last turn for spawns, so if I can, I'd love to block as many of these as possible. What I could do here is actually use the lightning mech to kill this guy, move the boulder mech over and push him into my shield bubble to kill him. Or vice versa, I want to give the kill to lightning mech so I do the boulder first. That means we block three spawns, but I can't block four of them. I actually can block four of them. We're going to block four of them and get the achievement. Alright, we've got this. The trick here is to use the Firefly to block one of them. So we're going to repair with Lily. We're going to use Bethany to use a boulder to push the Firefly out of that spawn, and use the Lightning Mech to block the last one. Alright. End turn. Bit of a weird way to plan your turn. But, we got an achievement to hold the line. And, uh, there's only one enemy left now. That should make things a little bit more manageable. Now, I wonder if I can shoot a mountain, just for no reason. Can I shoot mountains with boulders in a way that hurts them? You can. There you go. <laughs> Interesting. Alright, well, let's just apply a shield bubble. Actually, I'm going to repair myself. Perfect finish. There we go. Nothing Lily can't fix. You got that right. That is interesting. I was not expecting that to go so smoothly. But I will definitely take it. Let's end our turn here and see what the end of round options are for us, because we may have some interesting things to choose between. The Blitzkrieg here is doing some good work. I must admit that was an impressive performance. We will rest easier knowing that Vec Monstrosity no longer infests our island. Alright, we got two corporate reputation, 1500 civilians protected, and we can continue. You completed every mission on RST despite the odds. You've earned my respect, Blitzkrieg, and everything we can offer. Oh, Silica, man. Silica is so cool. Alright, Storm Generator is a no. That's just a solid no. Overpower Grid is a no. Silica is a totally possible option. Let's take Silica. Alrighty then. So, we have potential for some crazy mech action here if you want to use silica. Only question is where do we put them? Probably on the lightning mech so they can just zap the heck out of stuff if they're in the right position. And we can use the hook mech to potentially get them there without them having to move. Only problem is if we do double zaps with the bonus damage that's just gonna fry Lily instantly. 
We could also put it on the boulder mech to fire more rocks in a turn, but I don't know if that's necessarily better. I really don't know what I want to do with them yet. Let's take a look at the reputation sales and then we can consider this again. What are they offering us? They're offering us Vec Hormones, so enemies damage each other more. That's interesting, but we don't really want to rely on that as our main source of damage. The Smoke Drop is a one use per battle free five tiles of smoke. The Missile Barrage is pretty cool. The fact that it only goes up to two damage means it's not super versatile. It is really good for killing Scions, though. Really good for killing Scions and finishing off enemies. And given that our Chain Lightning combo can only ever do three damage, this might actually be really good. If we can have this on our Brute, then if our Prime hits them for three, we can use the Missile Barrage to clear out a whole chain of enemies. That might be really good. We also have the Cryo Launcher, which freezes the target and ourself. Which I'm not super keen on right now, given that we already have pretty good weapons for our other unit there. So I think we might take the Missile Barrage. The fact that it is still only one use per battle makes it... Eh, a little questionable. But we need something else that our uh, tank can do, and this would give it some serious additional firepower options. So I think we're going to take it. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to manage my pilots, though, because we need a lot of power to take advantage of Silica's ability, and power is definitely something we're a little low on right now. I can sell the Sidewinder Fist, because I don't think we're going to be using that anytime soon. I can sell Fox and potentially one of our other named pilots here, but I have to decide what we want to do with it. Either way, we're definitely taking the Missile Barrage. I don't even have to question that anymore. I don't know why I waited so long. We need something else on the Brute Mech, and this is a good option for us, as long as we can afford to put a bit of power into it to actually use it. The three power requirement isn't too high, but it should mean that it's actually able to do something. Now, as far as our other mechs go, where do we want our pilot to be? Silica's a really cool pilot. They're starting with three grid defenses. Their skill, though, which is pretty lame. It would make them a decent replacement for Bethany, but then we would lose the two health and the starting shield on the boulder mech, which would mean it's very vulnerable to attack. Alternatively, we could put Silica in place of Lily or Prospero. Lily so far hasn't been super important. I'm really not a fan of that impulsive ability. So we might be able to replace that with Silica, who's much more powerful, but right now the grappling hook missile barrage combo doesn't take advantage of Silica's power at all. What might be better then is to put Silica on, on the lightning mech, put Prospero in the hook mech, and leave Bethany in the boulder mech. I think that might be the maneuver here. Losing the extra reactor power kind of sucks. But, only kind of, because we haven't really used Shield Ally to any great effect yet. And having our robot team here may make things a lot more effective for us. Now, the question is what are we going to do for power, and are we going to sell Lily here? I don't know if we are. I think we might sell the Sidewinder Fist and Fox to get up to 9 reputation again to buy 3 more power cells, but keep Lily just in case we change our mind and want to take her back on. Plus we can always swap out the other guys later. So if we go back to our reputation menu, do we get rid of the Sidewinder Fist right now? And do we get rid of Lily instead? We only need to get rid of either Fox and the Fist or Lily, not both. Because we're going to buy two power cores, and we're going to get a third one as well. The question is just, what do we get rid of in order to get that third power core? So far, the Sidewinder Fist is interesting to have as an option. It does let us have a four damage attack with our Prime. And it lets us have an attack that doesn't chain through everything. But we haven't turned it on, even. And we're probably not going to. This also doesn't chain well with Prospero, because it moves something, and then you can't attack it again. So I think we're actually going to sell the Sidewinder Fist and Fox, and hold on to Lily for a little bit longer, and buy three power cores for now. Now we have three power cores to spend. I can put another one into Silica just to activate the double shot, and that might be worth doing, actually. Uh, the only problem is we have to not move for that to work, but it might still be worth considering. Prospero here, I kind of want to give him a power to turn on the Missile Barrage. 
I don't need to put any power into Bethany right now. So she's she's fine as she is. Her rock accelerator is a little weak, but her Gemini missiles are really strong. So she can choose between whether she wants to hit something and maneuver, fire a block, or do more damage. And her movement is fine for the moment. It's not great, but it'll do. Uh, Silica here and Prospero, though, are the ones we really need to decide about. I feel like putting a bunch of power into the brute mech so that we can turn the flying back on and turn the missile barrage on might be worthwhile, and then a single point into Silica so that we can use the double shot if we need to makes that a pretty reasonable set of choices. So one into Silica to turn on double shot. It's expensive to use, but it's really cool, and if we can get another useful uh, fist attack here, that might be a really strong prime mech. And then we're going to put two into Prospero for flying in the missile barrage. Now, the flying should be good with the grappling hook, we were just talking about this earlier, because it would let us fly over pits and pull people into the pit even though we're currently standing in it. Uh, missile Barrage right now, only one damage is not amazing. Getting that up to two is going to make it a lot better for us, because it means all these five damage enemies are going to be killable with a simple combo of Silica and Prospero, although right now we're just nowhere near that amount of damage, so we'll have to work around it. But I think this is more effective for the versatility of our team. The double shot should help with our damage output on the Prime if we can get something next to us to complete a chain, or we can use boulders or some other shenanigans to do it. And I think this should make sense. If we change our mind, we can always swap the double shot power into the bonus damage and then go from there. But for now, I think this is the way to go. It's a bit of a tricky upgrade choice here, because we kind of have some important decisions to make about how we're going to be using Silica right away. And it sucks that they have plus three grin defense as one of their abilities already, but so it goes. So, we are going to leave our second island here. We're actually doing pretty okay now. Hopefully, with this team of pilots whose skills are all pretty interesting, we should be well-placed to move forwards here. But we are hopefully going to find a whole bunch of time capsules, because man, do we need more power cells. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, though, thank you for watching, everyone. Hopefully that uh, debate about upgrading wasn't too tedious. I think we had some interesting choices to make there. Let me know what you thought about the episode as a whole in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.